Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. So I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, I'm going to be basically breaking down my ultimate tips for bulking. Now, these are the tips that have worked for me over my past couple of bulks and have helped me gain muscle without gaining too much fat. And these tips have helped me do it in a sustainable way over months and months rather than a couple of weeks. And if you are wanting to stick to a bulk, I would recommend doing it over quite a long period of time to get the best results possible. And it kind of avoids a drastic increase in calories if you're doing it over a longer period of time, rather than maybe just a month or so where the calories can be increased quite drastically, where that can be quite unsustainable. So I just want to help you out and give you the tips that have kind of worked for me if you are headed into a bulk yourself. And just the tips that will help you do it as effectively as possible for you personally. Obviously these are the tips that have worked for me, so some of these tips might not work for you guys, but I'm just recommending you know, tips and tricks. I know that bulking can be quite difficult and a lot of people kind of go into it blind and then they don't get the results that they want because they didn't know initially how to do it properly and how to adapt it to their own lifestyle. So I just want to explain exactly what a bulk is, just in case people don't know. Some people are like quite unsure about it. I know it's it's quite like um, a complicated topic and a lot of people don't know what it is. So being in a bulk essentially is being in a calorie surplus. Now a calorie surplus is when you're eating more calories than you're burning. That is literally it. That is the simple thing that you need to know. No more detail on that and some people call it a bulk. And then a calorie deficit is what some people call a cut, which is where you're eating less calories than you're burning. Now in a cut, you will lose weight and in a bulk, you will gain weight. Now for me personally, my main goal within my bulk is to gain more muscle than fat. So the weight, when I say gaining weight, that includes both muscle and fat. However, we want to reduce the gain of fat as much as possible and try and make most of that weight gain actually muscle gain. But I don't want to refer to it as bulk gaining muscle because you don't just gain muscle in a bulk with the extra calories and being in a calorie surplus you are bound to gain some fat it's inevitable you can't just avoid gaining fat altogether however with these tips and stuff i will tell you um, can help you gain as much muscle as possible without gaining too much fat as well but yeah that is essentially what a bulk is if anyone is a little bit confused um, I am personally using this bulk over the next few months, rolling into next year, to gain strength, to gain muscle, to literally gain confidence. Like, it literally makes me feel so strong when I'm bulking, and I love being able to hit PBs and stuff in the gym, and I love just seeing muscle gain on myself. I am naturally like very skinny and have a really fast metabolism. So, for me, bulking is really like, it's exciting for me because if I never had bulked, I would have never gained the muscle that I have now because I have done previous bulks and they have helped me gain a lot of the muscle that I've gained to this day. So for me personally, um, I love bulking and I just find that it enhances my training as much as possible and I personally cannot wait to go into the next few months feeling as strong as physically possible and looking as strong as possible as well. So I hope this video helps, maybe just save it or something if you can save it um, in case you're stuck and I will leave a little breakdown of all the points in the description so you can kind of just screenshot it and you can come back to it as a reminder if you're a little bit stuck if you are struggling during your bulk. Okay, without further ado, I am going to get straight into the points. Also, please excuse my um, voice. I have got a blocked nose. <laughs> I do not feel very well, but it's fine. And also, I've got um, a blister on my lip from being on holiday. Please ignore that. It does not look nice. <laughs> but anyway, let's ignore that and let's get straight into the tips. So, my first tip, which is actually something that I think is very overlooked and I've not really heard anyone kind of mention it in a video about bulking or anything but I actually think that it's so 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 helpful for me personally anyway and that is to wake up earlier in the day to get more calories in so if you're a person that doesn't really wake up early anyway I would definitely recommend it waking up even like two hours earlier can maybe allow you to get literally even like a thousand calories more in the day because I used to find myself when I like didn't really, didn't have a job and stuff, maybe like a couple of years ago and I was trying to bulk, I would wake up like midday, like maybe 11 o'clock, whereas now I wake up around seven and by 11 o'clock I've already had like a thousand calories. So it all, it does really help to wake up earlier to get those extra calories in and if you don't, you can find yourself at the end of the day, which is what I have done a lot of times, literally forcing calories down yourself and like essentially making yourself throw up, which I have done before. <laughs> I do not recommend it to anyone. 
So if you want to do it sustainably and make your life so, so much easier and less stressful, then I would definitely wake up earlier in the day to get more calories in, just literally, yeah, to make your life so much easier. Right, I'm not gonna like explain these tips like massively, massively in detail, just because there is like nine tips. <laughs> so it's quite a lot, um, but I did just wanna like basically cover everything that I want you guys to know. So that is my tip number one. Then tip number two would be to not do as much cardio. So say that you do cardio quite regularly, maybe every day or every other day. Maybe try cutting it down a little bit just so that your energy expenditure isn't as high. Because the thing is, when you're doing cardio, you're obviously burning calories. And if you're burning more calories, you're going to have to eat more calories to end up being in a surplus. Because if you're burning more calories, you're more likely to be at maintenance or in a deficit. And you're going to have to overcompensate that to be in a surplus by eating lots more calories. So you'll be making your life a lot easier if you don't do as much cardio and you try and burn as little amount of calories as possible. Now, I'm not saying to cut out cardio completely. Obviously, I know that it's so good for your body and I would never recommend to just cut it out if you split completely. Um, you know, it's obviously a healthy thing to do. It's healthy for your heart and your lungs and everything to incorporate cardio. I will still be keeping my one day of cardio within my split obviously that's literally one day it's not anything drastic it's not really going to affect my bulking results i'm just mainly making this a point to people that might do cardio every single day for a prolonged period of time i would maybe just decrease that a little bit just to make your life a little bit easier you're less likely to run the risk of dropping into a deficit or dropping down to maintenance but yeah i'm not telling you to cut it out completely i wouldn't recommend that um Cardio is still essential to do within your split. Just maybe reduce it a little to make your life a bit easy. You can still do it like as much as you want. You can still do a lot. You just have to overcompensate to be in a surplus and you just have to eat that extra amount of calories to be in that surplus. Okay, so my next point would be to not drastically increase the calories straight away. So for this to be sustainable for you and for the bulk to fit your lifestyle and so that you actually kind of continue on with it for a long period of time, it needs to be sustainable and that calorie increase Increase needs to be gradual and not all of a sudden. So what can happen a lot of the time if you increase those calories so drastically, say for example you go from 2,000 to 3,000 straight away, that can often be very difficult for people as they're not used to it at the start, which results in it just not being sustainable and people usually don't carry on with the bulk just because they find it too difficult and it's too much of a change in their diet to be able to keep up with it. So yeah, if you want your bulk to be sustainable and if you want to carry on with it for a prolonged period of time over the many months, then I would recommend increasing the calories very gradual. I don't really recommend weighing yourself. I'm not gonna go tell everyone to go weigh themselves. Um, however, it obviously is a good indicator to see if you're gaining weight or not, but I would only ever recommend that if you have a good relationship with the scales. If not, then absolutely scrap it. You do not need to use the scales whatsoever to monitor your progress. You can monitor it through how you feel, how you look in the mirror and how your strength is increasing. And if you find that by increasing it however many calories, you're increasing them by each week and you are seeing progress week by week, then just stick to that and maybe over time, if you are kind of seeing that you're hitting a little bit of a plateau, then increase it by a little bit more each week. It's just about finding what's work, what works for your body, to be honest. And just like in the gym, it's kind of like progressive overload. You just kind of need to be gradual with it week by week and you will see progress. Um, but yeah, it's just how you feel within yourself. Do not listen to anybody else's calories, anybody else's... Whatever anybody else is doing with their food or with their bulk, this is your bulk. Now, you increase the calories by however many you want each week or every couple of weeks. It's completely up to you and how you feel because some people react to a change in calories very easily and some people don't. So, increasing calories for me, personally, I don't really... My body doesn't really respond to the increase in calories that much, which is why I have to have a pretty high calorie intake on my bulk. But every single body is different, so please, I'm not going to tell you the calories that I'm eating. I used to do that, however, I just feel like it's a bit, it's just a bit useless to people, to be honest, and I don't want people to just copy my calorie intake because my body will be completely different to the next person's body, and even if I had the same body as somebody else's, would still be in different amounts of calories. So yeah, please do not compare your amount of calories to other people's and just do what works for your body and that is how it will be the most sustainable for you personally. So my next tip is kind of like an obvious point. However, it's something that a lot of people mistake and a lot of people, a lot of people tend to overcomplicate bulks a lot. But I'm gonna give you a simple tip that can help you in your bulk 
in the easiest way. So the meals that you're eating normally, not in a bulk, just day by day, all I'm gonna say is increase those portions very slightly. Now that is all you need to do in the first sort of few weeks to increase the calories, just that little bit is literally, it, it seems like it won't do anything, but trust me, your body will respond to that and your body will notice the change in calories. But maybe, for example, if you have half a packet of rice, do the full packet of rice. It's not like you have to add a whole new meal into your daily routine. It is literally just increasing little bits, bit by bit in each meal that you have already, which makes it seem not so difficult and actually pretty attainable. So for example, when I was maintaining, I had half a packet of rice, you know, those microwavable ones. I had half a packet um, with my meals and now I'm having a full packet. It's just little changes like that, which your body will respond to. Um, but it obviously it doesn't seem so like drastic in your head and it doesn't seem so daunting to like make a completely new meal in your plan which you don't have to do you can do if you want obviously it helps extra calories but this is just an, obviously a simple tip that you can utilize to just increase those calories a little bit more and another tip that I'm gonna say as well it's not in my notes here but it is kind of the increasing meal portion calories etc but last night when i made my rice i just added a teaspoon of butter into my rice and i just like mixed it in and just like that you've got like an extra 100 200 calories with that little lump of butter now obviously it's not the healthiest but it's just little things like that that can increase your calorie intake without you even noticing um that can help also adding a little bit of extra oil in your cooking is a good way because butter and oil and stuff like that are so high in calories that even just adding that little extra bit your body will respond to and obviously can increase your daily calories without you even realizing so my next point which is kind of similar to the last one is to try and opt for higher calorie snack choices so say you want to cut or something or you maintain you might have an apple for a snack maybe try and opt for something that is a little bit higher in calories just to kind of help you out obviously it, the whole duration of a bulk is to just make life so much easier for yourself because as i said i've been at those points where you have to absolutely force food down yourself to hit your calorie intake and that is just not what you want it just makes it so horrible and so much less enjoyable and it just makes you want to quit because you just feel horrible so opting for higher calorie snacks maybe such as things like nuts or healthier alternatives to crisps you know like those chickpea crisps i'm just trying to think of examples off the top of my head here bagels with like toppings on obviously that can be higher in calories um like literally just like toast with butter it's higher in calories than like fruit for example i'm not saying that you should just ditch the fruit altogether you can have that as well but i'm just kind of giving alternative options that are higher in calories that you should also have alongside your micronutrients as well i just want to say that snacks are literally life changing in a bulk like in your just your meals say you have three meals a day it's going to be kind of hard to get your entire calorie intake in just those meals um Obviously, it depends what you're eating and stuff, but you don't want to just be kind of having these huge meals that just make you feel so like bloated and horrible after when you can just kind of like space it out throughout the day, have little things throughout the day. For example, I had my breakfast this morning and then once I got back from the gym, I've had a protein yogurt and some shreddies which I am going to be posting my kind of full day of eating throughout this video so you'll be able to see. It's just like little clips, I'm just going to give you an idea, but this is my first bulk, my first day of my bulk actually as I'm filming this. Um, so yeah, which is why I wanted to film it, just to help as many people out as possible and give you some ideas. And just so you can kind of see that it's not actually as complicated as you might think. Obviously it's quite a daunting thing to go into if you've never done it before but I just want to show you that it's literally just a slight change and increase in those meals that you already have and just a little increase in the snacks that you're eating so yeah you will see my full day of eating throughout this video I'll put some clips here and there um but yeah I've had my snacks I'm gonna have my dinner soon and um, but I'm already up there about nearly a thousand calories after my breakfast and snacks so yeah they can be a life server which also leads me on to my next point which is it's not it's not necessary whatsoever because I don't really do this anymore. I used to, um, but I just don't enjoy actually drinking them. But shakes can absolutely save your life. If you are stuck on time, if you are stuck on money, for example, as I know books can be very expensive. I've just spent like £50 on a weekly shop just for myself. Um, but yeah, shakes, which you can implement kind of high calorie supplements into those shakes which can easily put you up there in 
the high amounts of calories. Sorry, I'm sitting on my feet and I'm getting pins and needles. But yeah, for example, if you buy kind of like a Gainer shake and it has maybe, a lot of those shakes can literally have like so many calories and you can have some with thousands in it. Depends what you kind of add to it, but you can add little things into the shakes that can make them obviously higher in calories. And obviously I'm not recommending that everyone should start taking supplements. However, supplements can be there to supplement your diet, which is what they are. You don't need supplements and you can do a bulk effectively without them. However, sometimes gainer shakes can be very useful if you are someone that has a very busy schedule and you don't have time to be snacking all the time and making these meals all the time. Gainer shakes can be very useful and helpful sometimes. So if you are someone that is stuck on time, maybe just have a look into them. And if it's something that you want to do, you might find that it kind of like changes your life and is really useful. However, I don't have anything like that anymore. I used to, when I used to work my um, nine to five job, however, I'm now full time self-employed. So I'm at home all the time, which means, you know, I could be snacking and making my meals at home like all day long because I'm just at home all day. It's such a blessing for me right now because it's obviously going to be so much easier than it was when I was working at my nine to five. It was just a little bit more stressful. But yeah, my next point is like, I've kind of already mentioned it actually, so I don't really know if it's a separate point, but it's don't leave your meals until the end of the day. So as I've already mentioned, this can literally be the worst thing. This can honestly be the worst thing in your whole life. If you leave all these calories, until the end of the day. I've been there, I've been there where in the day, I'm not hungry at all and I'm like, no, I'll just have them later. Even if you are not hungry, sometimes you do just still have to eat to get the calories in and sometimes it can be pretty brutal and you have to force food down yourself but this is kind of talking more in the very high calorie range and if you're someone that maybe has a smaller appetite can be quite difficult but yeah please try and avoid as much as possible leaving your meals until the end of the day and make sure you're spreading them out throughout the day this just leads back to my main point of sustainability you want this whole journey to be as sustainable as possible for you to one achieve the best results and to actually continue on with the bulk over a prolonged period of time and if it is unsustainable that is something that you probably won't do because you find your body might just find it too difficult to like keep up with because you're making life so much more difficult for yourself and then my next point is something kind of a little bit different but i do feel like it needs to be talked about and that is to trust the process now I have had countless messages of girls on Instagram saying they want to bulk or they are bulking but they are struggling so much with body image and they don't want to go into a bulk because they think that they're going to struggle too much with their body image. Obviously you are gaining extra weight and you're going to look different. It's a whole point of the bulk really. However, I do know it can get a lot of people down. It gets me down sometimes if you're feeling a little bit, uh, like you just you just feel a bit not like your usual self obviously you've probably gained quite a lot of weight in a smaller amount of time than usual but my tips for you would just be remember the goals that you have why you are doing this journey why you are actually doing this bulk remember your why so i always talk about your why within your fitness journey why have you started your fitness journey in the first place it's kind of the same idea with the bulk why have you started this bulk what do you want to get out of this bulk and yeah, just remember that it is a process and it is a learning curve as well so just take it easy on yourself and don't be so hard on yourself i know it can be difficult at first especially if you've never done one before but just know that everything will work out in the end and hopefully you are putting the bulk to good use which leads me on to the next point which is to use that extra energy and fuel to hit PBs in the gym. Now this is the point that kind of makes the bulk all seem so much more magical and amazing which is being able to hit PBs in the gym and your strength increasing in the gym so much. Now this is maybe the biggest plus for me during a bulk is like being able to hit those big numbers over time. Obviously your calorie intake is higher which means you have more energy to convert into strength and hit those PBs when lifting within the gym which is such an amazing feeling if you've never bulked before get excited about that part of the bulk because that is my favorite part I think apart from the seeing the muscle growth and stuff but yeah I just feel like even just hitting PBs in the gym and being able to lift heavier it makes you feel so much stronger and more confident within yourself and just so much more powerful although a bulk can be very difficult at times um, and you might seem like you want to give up remember why you've started the bulk what you want to get out of it and just make sure you are putting the bulk to good use and my next tip would be to keep the bulk as clean as possible now you can bulk in two ways you can clean bulk or you can dirty bulk now you may have heard those terms floating around on the internet 
Um, but a clean bulk is essentially keeping the calories as healthy as possible. You know, you're still getting your five a day, you're still getting all your micronutrients in, you're splitting up your carbs, your protein and your micronutrients in every single meal and you're not substituting in many meals that are high in trans fats and yeah, just refined sugar and unhealthy fats and sugars and stuff. You are keeping it as clean and healthy as possible whilst obviously it's still being in the higher calorie range. This can obviously be much more difficult just because obviously healthy food is not as high calories as it would be, for example, to just go and eat a pizza. Yeah, you're gonna be in a calorie surplus, however, that is the kind of path that you will be gaining more fat than muscle, whereas a clean bulk is where you will gain more muscle than fat. Which leads me on to talking about a dirty bulk. So a dirty bulk, is essentially an unhealthier bulk. So you're gonna be eating more of those trans fats, you're gonna be eating more of that refined sugar, pizzas, burgers, chocolate, you're gonna be eating all of that sort of stuff. Now, a lot of people do this to gain a lot of weight, mostly fat essentially, in a small amount of time. Obviously eating foods like that are gonna put you in a much higher calorie range, which is obviously gonna increase your weight a lot quicker. Yeah, lots of people do this to see very quick changes within their body, however, I don't recommend it if you are wanting your bulk to be sustainable, actually healthy for yourself, fueling your body and actually being able to feel good within your body. I don't recommend doing a dirty bulk, each to their own, but I would never recommend anybody to do a dirty bulk. Um, just overall, essentially, you can probably tell it's not good for your body whatsoever. So yeah, I would recommend doing it over a long period of time, healthily, as healthy as possible. Obviously, with a bulk, you can kind of give yourself a little bit more leniency. I give myself a little bit more leniency with snacks, for example. If I have kind of had all of my micronutrients for the day, if I've stayed on track for the whole day, and I fancy a chocolate bar, I'm gonna be more inclined to eat it than I would if I was in a bulk, just because it is extra fuel at the end of the day, and I don't like to see any foods as bad foods. Um, it's obvi That's just obviously a type of food that you want to kind of reduce as much as possible, but as I always say, you want to eat all foods in moderation, so please do not cut out any food groups, um, but I just want to stress that I do give myself a lot more leniency in a bulk, in case people are wondering, I do allow myself to eat the more higher calorie unhealthy foods a little bit more often um i'm not saying this in a drastic way whatsoever but i will just be a little bit more inclined to eat things like that and just let myself kind of have it more often just because i know that it's being put to good use it's being used for fuel and it's helping me be in that higher calorie range but i would never intend to be in a dirty bulk or recommend anyone to be in a dirty bulk um that is just essentially going from one extreme to the other doing a dirty bulk um but I just like to keep everything in moderation, keep it as clean as possible. But that is kind of all the tips that I have for you that I think, I think that is all the tips that I have to tell you. There's probably some more, but I think these are my main ones. But now I'm gonna get on to kind of answering some questions that you guys have asked me um, on Instagram, just because I feel like it'd be quite helpful you know, like you guys actually asking questions rather than me just talking at you. I want to actually answer people's queries. So let me just find the question box thing because I've had to re-put a new one on because I forgot to screenshot the questions from the other day. So just give me one second. So as I kind of already touched on, but someone said, how should I feel when all my bulk, all the bulk is making my stomach bigger and it makes me want to stop bulking? So a lot of the questions are about body image and how their bulk is making their stomach kind of look bigger um but that is essentially inevitable during a bulk there's going to be parts of you that get bigger than other parts that you just can't really control you cannot spot fat reduce or fat gain you cannot choose where you want the weight to gain or lose you know if you're in a deficit or bulk you cannot choose where it is that is all down to genetics unfortunately which you can't control um but if you are kind of gaining weight in other areas as well, which is obviously the aim, then honestly, as I said, just try and keep as consistent with it as possible and try and keep going. If it's getting you down that bad, then you can obviously just stop the bulk. I would never tell anyone to just like forcefully carry on with the bulk if they're not enjoying it. Um, you should only really be starting a bulk if you know exactly why you started it. Don't just start a bulk just because other people are bulking, you know? Like you don't just have to follow a trend. If you want to increase muscle mass if you want to increase strength within the gym then i would recommend doing a bulk however if you don't know why you're starting a bulk and you're just starting one because everyone else is then i would 
pull out from that and really just think to yourself why am I doing this and if you don't need to do a bulk you don't have to do one lots of people just do them obviously to gain that muscle and gain that strength yeah just remember why you are doing the bulk and just keep consistent with it and just try and persevere through that body image kind of negativity I know it's very common I experience it as well it's just kind of a learning curve of the bulk but if it is making you that unhappy then stop if it's really not worth it so someone said how to switch from a cut to a bulk without gaining too much fat so as I said obviously gaining fat is going to be inevitable you are still going to gain it a little bit but the aim is to gain as much muscle as possible so I would recommend increasing the calories gradually with this obviously like I said you want to make it as sustainable as possible and you want your metabolism and your body to kind of ease into this calorie increase because your body can give you all types of responses if you've just kind of given it a sudden overload of calories and it can it probably won't end well if you have increased it by that much in a small amount of time so yeah keep the calorie increase gradual and i would also say keep the protein intake high which is also a big factor in a bulk as well you want to keep the protein as high as possible you want to aim for around one gram per pound of body weight it's obviously different with every single body type but that is personally what i aim for and i usually go a little bit over that um but if I don't, then it's not the end of the world. I see all these people eating excessive amounts of protein. And honestly, it doesn't really matter if you have that much or not. Because your body can only process so much protein in one day anyway. If you are having over the amount that you need, it's just going to get... It's not going to be used. It's not going to be put to good use. And it's just going to get kind of flushed out of your body. You're not going to put it to any good use. So don't stress about having like 200 grams of protein. Like it obviously depends your weight, your body type and stuff like that but honestly you do not need to be eating that much protein that is kind of like unsustainable and unnecessary amount i'm just throwing that number out as an example um but just focus on your weight and everything like the amount of protein that someone should be eating is completely dependent on their body type and how much they weigh so yeah please do not be worrying about excessive amounts of protein it's just not not going to put to good use so someone said how do you know when it's time to increase calories for example last year bulk was 2000 but this year what would it be it's kind of stressful knowing so if you don't actually know what kind of calorie range to start at then i would recommend going online you can actually search up your maintenance calories which gives you kind of a rough idea you kind of like put your weight in and stuff like that and it calculates your maintenance calories um, and from that I'll just kind of take that as a rough estimate obviously on the internet it's never going to be 100% accurate and if you really want an accurate source then you can maybe look into um, getting someone to work it out for you like a professional nutritionist and stuff I would never give you those numbers because I'm not a professional and I don't want to throw numbers out there that are wrong um, but yeah you can work out your maintenance roughly on the internet and then from that you can kind of gradually increase it week by week but as i said before you can kind of know when to increase the calories your body will indicate it to you by how it looks how you feel how you feel in the gym everything like that you'll be able to tell when you need to increase the calories i'd recommend doing it every week or every other week and um, just literally by little amounts you need to work out for yourself how many calories you need to be increasing by each week but over the weeks you will realize what works for your body you don't need to know how to do it all straight away it is a learning curve and you will learn it over the time that you are bulking so someone said how long should it last and what are your thoughts about intuitive bulking so i think by intuitive bulking she might mean not tracking calories um so i'm going to just say the talk about the first point that she said how long should it last um and that completely depends on the person it depends on your goals it depends yeah, it basically just depends on your goals so it depends how much weight you want to gain or how you want to look for example some people do bulks for maybe six months some people do them for years people do them for years and it literally depends person to person you just need to work out yourself what your goals are say you have hit your kind of physical appearance goal or your weight goal within like four months you could stop bulking then there's no like time st stamp on it or anything it's down to the individual completely don't just do the bulk for a certain amount of time because somebody else is you just need to do 
whatever works for you and it's literally it's your body at the end of the day so if you bulk for only a smaller amount of time and you're still happy with how you look over that small amount of time you can stop then it's literally completely up to you and about the intuitive bulking i think she does mean about calories that i'm not too sure but i have had um questions about the calorie tracking as well and if i think that calorie tracking is essential for bulking now obviously i know that it is quite a sensitive topic with a lot of people and i would never just recommend everyone to go and track their calories however if you want to do a bulk as effective as possible and kind of know exactly how many calories you're eating each day and stuff just to make it as effective and on track as possible i would recommend tracking calories um just because it is what has worked for me personally and i know exactly how many calories i'm eating how many i need to increase it by each week to kind of see the results that i'm wanting during the bulk however if you're not too bothered about that and you do actually you just want to gain a little bit of weight you're not like too strict about it and you're not too not the end of the world if you do it under a certain amount of period of time or not then you can do it without tracking calories obviously you know yourself if you're eating more calories than normal so you can do it like that as just like a bit of a rough estimate and you just know yourself that you're eating a little bit more food than normal day by day you can definitely do it like that without tracking calories but yeah i wouldn't stress about calories if you are not too fussed about it and if you are someone that kind of struggles with the idea of calories then don't stress too much you can do it without um, yeah, as I said, you'll be able to know if you're eating more food each day. Just increase it just a little bit, as I said, by doing these little things to make it seem less daunting. So someone said, do you get bloated? Now I'm just going to keep that answer short and sweet and say yes. Everybody gets bloated, okay? No matter what influencer you see on Instagram, if they say they're not, if they say they don't get bloated, they're lying. Someone say, do you gradually build the calories or just jump straight into it? Definitely gradually increase the calories, work out your maintenance, like I said, and increase it week by week and just kind of monitor how your body is responding to that increase in calories and what you need to do from then onwards. How do you stay so lean? Someone said, are you doing cardio still? So I get this question a lot and honestly, I can't really give you any advice other than the fact that I am naturally very small and skinny. I naturally have a very fast metabolism, which means I burn calories very quickly. Honestly, when I'm bulking, my aim is not to stay lean. However, I do anyway, which is annoying and it's not my goal. I don't want to stay lean while I'm bulking. Obviously, it's not the aim, but my body just, just literally doesn't really respond to an increase in calories that well. I could be eating 5,000 calories a day or something and I would probably look the same, which is really annoying. And it's why I have to do it over a long period of time and actually have quite a lot of calories. Um, but I think people say it in regards to my like stomach and my, how, like, how my stomach stays lean um, year round. And that is essentially down to genetics, which means that I don't actually gain that much fat on my stomach. I gain it in other areas. Now, this is something that unfortunately you cannot change. It's obviously due to genetics. Everyone gains and loses fat in different parts of your body more than others. And unfortunately, you can't change it and you can't choose where you want to gain and build where the only thing you can really do is obviously do what you can being in a calorie surplus doing the things you can to increase muscle mass as much as possible only a certain point that you can go to and then genetics obviously takes over genetics will stop you from going to certain lengths which obviously a lot of people don't want to hear but it is like the hard truth that i realized i just ran i just like had a coughing fit um but it is the hard truth there's only so much that you can do yourself to kind of change the way that your body looks genetics will hold you back a lot of the time and a lot of people are favored with genetics and some people are not so favored with genetics it completely depends um but i think a lot of people disregard that point of genetics and a lot of people forget about that some people are really responsive to changes in calories some people can gain muscle very easily some people can gain fat very easily everyone is just completely different someone said are you always sore and how do i know i'm overtraining so no i'm not always sore that is a point that i actually want to emphasize you do not need to be sore after every session um Usually if you're sore, it's usually if you've maybe not trained for a while, you've taken a prolonged period of rest and your body's a little bit unused to training, that is when you'll get sore, which I am at the moment because I've just had a week off. Um, or it might be if you're trying out a new type of training, maybe you've progressively overloaded in a certain session more than you usually would have um, and just tried out something different, that is usually when you will be sore. However, it doesn't indicate if your session was good or bad, you can still have the best sessions of your life and not be sore the day after and she said how do i know i'm overtraining 
Um, I think you'll know if you're overtraining, you'll be able to tell within yourself that you're kind of hitting a standstill and you're not feeling great within yourself, you're kind of losing a lot of energy and if that is the case I would maybe recommend just taking a deload week and just kind of realigning your goals and rewriting them and knowing exactly what you want from your training and making sure that you don't overtrain again obviously you can cause injury that way you can cause high amounts of fatigue and yeah you can actually hit plateaus and actually deplete if you are overtraining which is not what we want so you need to be making sure that you are taking those rest days every single week please i take one or two it literally just depends how i'm feeling if i'm feeling more tired than usual i'll take two rest days it literally doesn't matter sometimes i'll even take three rest is is equally important as training I promise you that. Someone said, would a small calorie surplus while hitting daily protein goals still achieve results? Yeah, 100%. As I said, you want the calorie increase to be gradual and literally just increasing those calories little by little each week. However, you want to increase them over your certain amount of time, you work it out for yourself. Your body will respond to that increase in calories, I promise. It might not seem like a lot, but don't just think that you need to dive headfirst into this bulk. As I've said this whole video, it needs to be sustainable and it needs to work for you and your schedule and your body. Okay, someone said, do you track your food and macros and someone's people are asking for my macros and calories and stuff and I don't think I'm going to mention it just because I just don't I just really don't want people to go and copy my exact kind of nutritional information that I eat obviously I don't mind sharing it and it's not like some sort of big secret I just don't want to run the risk of people going to copy that and then it not working for them and stuff. Everybody is completely different. So please just go and work it out for yourself, your macros and stuff like that. But yes, I do track my calories and I do track my food. As you'll see in this video, I'm just implementing little bits of my full day of eating into this video and you'll see that I'm kind of scanning my food and stuff. I use an app called Lifesum. However, I've used other ones before and stuff and I do kind of jump between apps and stuff. Um, but Lifesum, I think has been like one of my favorites so far it's just really simple and easy to use so if you're looking for a calorie tracking app then life sums really good i've used it for years honestly years i've had um a lot of questions about oxy shred and if you can still take oxy shred when you bulk it and stuff and i definitely do obviously oxy shred hasn't got any calories in it or anything so i would obviously i, don't, I would honestly just disregard that as a point from your bulk and just take it as you normally would i am still taking it anyway and obviously it's not increasing or decreasing my calories at all because i personally don't take it for the fat burning aspect whatsoever and i don't want to promote it for the fat burning aspect as you can probably tell on my socials i don't promote it for that i purely promote it for the energy that it gives me mainly the natural boost of energy that it gives me the boost in immunity and the boost in my mood that is why i take oxy shred and it tastes really nice as well i do not take it for the fat burning aspect honestly i just disregard that completely i don't care about that and i literally couldn't care less if it burns fat or not i don't take it for that i take it as a natural pre-workout so i am just taking my oxy shred as normal as i normally would to, because i just don't care about the fat burning aspect if i was you i wouldn't either honestly just completely ignore it i don't take it for that reason at all yeah. right okay i'm not going to wait for any more questions to come in just because they'll just take ages so i think that is the main ones anyway that is the main basis of the questions that i've been asked bulk wise on my instagram and stuff however if you do have any more questions then just shoot me over a dm on instagram and i'll be happy to answer but i'm obviously trying to help you guys out daily anyway on my instagram by posting as much content as i can and um, posting meal ideas and stuff as you'll see in this video as well i've been letting you guys in on some meal ideas that i have been making this is my first day of my bulk so yeah but obviously having done this quite a few times i obviously know what works for my body i know how, I would probably know how many calories is in all the food I'm eating anyway, even if I wasn't tracking. I just like it being there, regimented in my phone, so I know exactly how much I need to eat, etc. But yeah, I hope you found this video helpful. Please let me know if you have any more questions. Literally just comment them in the comments or anything and just let me know if you have any queries. I do hope you found this helpful and please let me know if you're starting your bulk alongside me and we can do this together, do it as a team. I'm definitely gonna be posting more bulking videos on my YouTube to help you all out and keep you all in the loop. Um, but yeah, we'll all be doing this together as a team. You're not alone, you're never alone, promise. And if you do need help, please just send me a message or comment on this video. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one, bye.